Hi, my name is Sherry Safaldi Morrill. I'm a designer, quilter, and pattern publisher. My work is inspired by my everyday life, and sometimes this includes travel. While I was on the Hawaiian Islands, I admired the beautiful design and craftsmanship of traditional Hawaiian quilts. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can design your own Hawaiian-inspired applique, like my quilt here. First, you'll need some paper, and I recommend working with a sheet at least 18 inches square. Next, we're gonna fold it. First, you're gonna fold it in half, and we want to give that fold a really good crease. So I'm gonna use my marking tool, here a marker, to give that a good crease. Next, we're gonna fold it again in half, and it's really important that the two folds align. The raw edges can be approximate. And again, give it a really good crease so it lays nice and flat. Next, we're gonna fold one more time into eighths, and again, fold it and crease it making sure that the two folds are well aligned and you have a nice tip. It's important to use a lightweight paper because we have eight layers here. I recommend making a number of these when you're just getting started so that in the next step, design, you have lots to experiment with. So you're gonna sketch out what you want your design to be and it's important to pay close attention to how much you're drawing at the folds. If you cut a lot of way from the folds, it's gonna be pretty intricate and difficult to work with. So I'm just gonna sketch out a design, pretty basic. Once you're happy with it, you're gonna use a pair of paper scissors to cut it out. And I have mine already cut here, so you could see what it looks like. I went ahead and I have another sample that's open, so you could see what that looks like. So this is one eighth of the overall design. Let me show you some other examples of designs I made. In this sample, you could see I have sort of one petal shape and what that looks like when it's open. In this next example, it's a little bit more complicated and I also cut away some space at the fold, leaving negative space, which is a really nice play on the positive and the negative. In this last example, I played with the shapes at the corners. So I have these nice tips instead of rounded corners, which gives a really nice effect. I also went ahead and where all the paper met at the corner, I cut that away, leaving me with one large organic hole in the middle. Once you decide on your paper design, now it's time to select fabric. I really like to use mini charm packs of fabric so I can see how my colors interact with one another. You could see what the background and the foreground look like next to one another. And you can also see how your colors look on top of one another. Since applique is one layer on another, if you use a light color on top of a dark color, you might get some see-through, which is okay. It's just a design choice. So you'll wanna know what that looks like before you go ahead and cut everything. Once you select your fabric, you'll then want to cut a piece that is at least an inch and a half larger in both directions. You'll also wanna prepare your fabric. I recommend spray starching it. This allows um, less fraying once it's all cut out. You will also, if you use an applique where you need fusible webbing, now is the time to apply it. So my fabric is already prepared and I'm gonna move over to the pressing board to fold it. So first, you'll wanna fold your fabric in half, just like we did the paper. And you're gonna give this fold a really good press. You wanna make sure that you use a really hot iron, but you don't want steam, because that'll take out all of the starch we put in. You're gonna fold it again, again, making sure that those two fold lines align well. Give it a good press and we're gonna fold one more time, aligning those folds, making sure we have a nice point. The raw edges can be approximate. And press. Next, I'm gonna move over to the machine to baste. So my machine is set up to a nice long stitch of five. And making sure that nothing shifted, I'm gonna start at the point 
and I'm gonna stitch all along the edge. We're gonna remove these basting stitches when we're done with the applique. And if you find that there's holes in your applique, that's okay, just go ahead and apply it. And then at the end, once it's all applied, use a hot iron and the holes should release. So I have one that's all basted here. As you can see, I made nice long lines to secure all late eight layers of fabric. Next, you're gonna take your paper pattern and you're gonna align it to the corner and you're gonna make sure that the single fold is aligned with the single fold um, of the fabric, the single fold of the paper, excuse me, and the single fold of the fabrics are aligned and the doubles are aligned. You're next gonna use a fabric marking tool to trace all around the outside. If you're going to needle turn applique, you'll want to add an eighth of an inch of seam allowance away from the template. This is to allow for that turning of the fabric so that your design doesn't shrink. So once your pattern is all traced onto your fabric, you're gonna use sharp fabric scissors to cut through all eight layers. I really like to have two pairs of fabric scissors close by. A larger pair for those bigger areas and then a shorter pair with a really fine point for more detailed areas. So now let's cut out our design. I'm gonna start at the corner and one thing I forgot to mention before was that if you cut in at a perpendicular to the fold, you'll get a nice rounded edge. If you cut at any other type of angle, you'll get a point. So some people may wonder why I based so much. And if you were just cutting out one petal shape, it wouldn't be a big deal. But because you're gonna see all eight petals repeated, you want them as consistent as possible so you don't want these fabric layers to shift as you're cutting out. Great, so I'm all cut out and I'll remove my basting stitches and this is what it looks like when it's open. It doesn't need to be one piece of fabric. Let me show you some examples. In my Big Island Blossom mini quilt and pillow, first I machine pieced the backgrounds and then I applied the design motif. So in my mini quilt, you can see I selected really bold solid colors, giving it that modern twist and mixed it up with a really, really subtle metallic-y print. I also went back and I match stick quilted the backgrounds with matching threads. For the pillow, I used four different pieces, machine piecing it using the curves, and again applied the motif. I again used matchstick twist, matchstick quilting in the motif. For my larger Big Island Blossom quilt, I used the same techniques as the mini quilt and the pillow, but did it multiple times, and then machine pieced them all together. Traditional modern quilts are often hand quilted using echo quilting. I did again another modern twist by echo quilting but using my walking foot on my machine. So I hope you can see that the possibilities are endless. I encourage you to play and make your own Hawaiian inspired quilt.